In this video, we'll learn to understand and calculate using ratio, direct proportion and inverse proportion. What is ratio? Ratio shows exactly how much of each part or how many of each part or ingredient are needed to make the total, to make a drink, to make a mixture. For example, you might need one part juice and four parts water to make a drink. So, if I have two parts juice, how much water do I need in order to make the mixture? So what's happened to the one part of juice? It is that it has doubled. So that part of water or the amount of water will double as well. So that bit will become eight. And what do we notice? One part juice and four parts water makes five parts or five units of drink. So again, when we've doubled, What's happened to the total amount is that it's doubled as well. So when you double the ingredients, the total doubles as well. So by using the ratio 1 to 4, we worked out how much water we would need if we used two parts juice. And also we looked at the total. So if we're using one part juice, that could be maybe 100 millilitres of juice mixed with 400 millilitres of water. And as you can see, this is one part. So the amount of water is four times the amount of juice. And that's what's happened here as well. Even when it doubled, the amount of water is four times the amount of juice because two times four makes eight. So let's have a look at another question. If, let's say, Jake and Omar share money in this ratio. So two to three. So if Jake gets two pounds, Omar will get three pounds. So what how much money would Jake get if Omar got £30? So we'll look at what's happened. From 3 to get to 30, we multiplied by 10. So we've gone in 10 steps. Doubling and then multiplying by 3, 4, 5 and so on till we got to 10. So we kind of skipping those steps and we're going straight to 30. So Omar has got 30. How much will Jake get? So as we said, the same thing happens to every ingredient. If this was multiplied by two, this was multiplied by two and this was multiplied by two as well. Now this has been multiplied by 10. So it's growing in proportion. This is what we call direct proportion. And so the amount that Jake will get will be 10 times larger than what the ratio says. So 2 times 10 equals 20. So both of them were multiplied by 10. So through the ratio and direct proportion, we're able to find how much there is in one of these two. So to find the specific amount, if you know how much Omar got, then you can find how much Jake will get. Or if you found how much Jake got, then you'll find how much Omar, through that, how much Omar will get as well. So that's one question that you could answer by using ratio and direct proportion. 
So we'll now look at another type of question using ratio and direct proportion. So, so Anne and Hannah will share chocolate bars in the ratio of five to four. So when Anne gets five bars, Anna will get four. So how much will each of them get if there are 54 chocolate bars in total? So where does that go? Does it go under Anne's amount, under Hannah's amount, or is it the total? That is actually the total. At the moment, if Anne gets five and Hannah gets four bars of chocolate, that is nine in total. But that's due to change because we're saying there are 54 available. So that is 54. If you like, you can call these the totals column. So nine to get to 54, we multiply by six so this is gone six times bigger so what we've learned is that these must be must be multiplied by the same number as well so they five needs to be multiplied by six and four needs to be multiplied by six as well so five times six is 30 and four times six is 24 does that add up to the total so 30 and 24 gives us 54 as well so we've split it or we've shared it correctly so we've used the ratio and then we increase these in direct proportion in all of these three cases what we'll look now we'll look at now is inverse proportion so we'll see what inverse proportion means it takes one person four days to build or to actually paint a whole house. So one person takes four days. We'll now look at how long will it take two people to actually paint the house. Is it direct proportion? Do we expect the number of days to increase? We know that that's not the case because if there are two people involved, it's not going to take as long to build, the, to build or to paint the house. So what happens is something slightly different when it comes to inverse proportion because this is inverse proportion so this grows bigger this grows smaller so what's happened from one to get to two we've multiplied by two now in direct proportion we said we do the same we draw the arrow and multiply it by two but we don't expect two people to take eight days to paint the house so we don't expect this to double. What's going to happen instead is the opposite. So this will be divided by 2. So 4 divided by 2 makes 2. So 2 people will take 2 days to paint the house. So in a hospital, when there is one nurse available, She's got to see all of the 12 patients in the ward. What's going to happen if there are three nurses available? So what's happened to the number of nurses been multiplied by three? So what's going to happen to the number of patients is 
that it's going to be divided by three because they will share the patients. They will look after fewer patients. So that's what they're going to do. So 12 divided by three gives us four. That's how many patients each. So how many patients they will look after each of them. So as you can see, this is what we call inverse proportion. So one amount ingredient, one side increases, the other decreases. Whatever you multiply this side by, you divide the other side by. And when it comes to direct proportion, we multiply both sides by the same number. So this is direct proportion.